Okay. Um, so this is the uh, after the Gerber section of KiCad. Okay. Um, there's really not much you, you, you don't actually have to do anything, but there's one step that I really recommend that people do. What happens is you want to basically archive your drawing, okay? And the most important thing is to archive the printed circuit board. So they have, down here under the file menu, they have archive footprints, okay? I really recommend you do this. You say create footprint archive, and I'm going to have to, it always shoves me off into the, the, the KiCad install directory. I have to go to the directory that the board's actually located in. So bear with me for a couple of seconds. Um, and I always have each, each revision of my uh, board is in a separate revision directory. And then I'm going to go create. Um, it looks like I've done this once before, but, so I'll create a, another one. Motor 3 rev d archive dot mod. Okay. So now all of my footprints have been cooked into a single library. And then what I do, and I'm not going to do this in, in front of you uh, because it takes too long, is I come up to my library preferences and I just start deleting everything. And when I'm all done, I'm on, the only library I'm going to have for footprints is going to be the one that I just created. Okay? So I delete everything. Okay, it takes too long. And I delete the uh, path, and I make sure that the only path in my library is the one that it's in. And this is basically, you're just cooking it down so that you do not ever have your footprints change. This allows you to go back three years in the, you know, in the past and look at your drawings and still say, oh, I see what happened there. Because... Printed circuit boards have a life, and they sometimes last for years. Okay, I, I've had boards that I literally I hadn't looked at in four or five years, and suddenly I, I needed to look at the original uh, documentation, and I could do so because I took the time now to save the board in, in an archival format. So that's really all I wanted to say about archiving. You want to archive at least the footprints. I also will do a little extra work to archive the schematic, but that, that I'm less worried about. Uh, usually all, the only thing that happens is some wire, some, if, if the schematic gets a little messed up, you can sort of figure out what happened and why. So that's all I wanted to do there. Okay. Now we're going to talk about part ordering. So the name of the game is, um, I'm just going to leave this up here for uh, you know, this is all verbal at this point in time, is you, there's a race going on, okay? And the race is, who's going to, are you going to get all your parts first, or your boards, okay, or your stencils, okay? If you're going to do stencils, um, I've had pretty good luck getting those, you know, uh, done and turned around in, in about five days, Um I use a, a, an outfit called O'HaraRP.com, and uh, he does very nice stencils at a very reasonable price. Okay, uh, the stencils are the paste layers, and you just you know, send 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 the send your paste layers off to um, um, the, uh, your stencil vendor, and they take care of it. Of course, the printed circuit vendor is taking care of your Gerbers, so now you have to order your parts. Uh, parts ordering is painful. Um, um, the, one of the things I like about the fact that Eagle got bought out by Element 14, you know, Farnell, is that they're going to start integrating uh, parts uh, purchasing right into the, uh, the program. I think that's going to be the next big thing that's going to happen in these um, um, uh, programs like KiCad. I don't know when or if KiCad is going to get integration, but it, 
it's really, a, it is difficult. So anyhow, you just go to your bill of materials. Um, I'll, I'll go here to the, um, this is good enough for a bill of materials. You can write out a bill of materials, okay? And you basically start ordering them. I mean, you know, uh, you go to like DigiKey, Mouser, Jameco, whatever, and you start selecting them. The key and most important thing is for surface mount parts, you want to order extras. Why? Because they fall on the floor and you never ever see them again. Okay? So you want extras because otherwise you get, an, get the weight again while you, you, you get the missing part. Um, we're lucky here in Silicon Valley. Uh, if there's a part, you, can, you have two really reasonable sources to go to. You have Anchor Electronics and that's in uh, Santa Clara near NVIDIA and you have Jameco which is located up uh, towards the airport right off of 101. It's right next to Oracle if you know where the Oracle buildings are. Um, but in general we mostly we order from like DigiKey and Mouser um, because they have the larger selection. And um, you want to minimize the number of vendors you buy from because they're going to charge you shipping. Shipping is actually a substantial part of the cost um, because these, most of these parts don't cost that much. Um, uh, when you buy your microcontrollers, they will usually come in a tray. Um, I don't have a tray with me right now, um, but the trays are big and they actually, um, they're, these, you know, they're like, usually like by 10 or 10 by 15 parts are fit in a tray and they will send you an entire tray and it'll have like three parts in it because that's what you ordered and that's just the way it is that's the way the way the whole thing works I'm sure that there's ways of recycling those trays but I haven't figured it out yet so I have a stack of trays slowly building in my garage until the, until the day comes when I can figure out how to return the trays to the vendors so they can recycle them okay um, so you order your parts and you wait for them to show up. Um, for prototypes with surface mount, I almost always order cut, cut tape. Um, when the parts arrive, you will, in fairly short order, discover that it's really a pain in the rear to keep track of the parts. So plastic bags are your friends. Put everything into a plastic bag and zip lock it tight. Okay, you can have multiple plastic bags. Well, you can put all your resistor parts in one plastic bag, all your capacitors in another, and all your miscellaneous in another. And then put, take those bags and put them in a bigger plastic bag. Okay, um, and that's where you're going to start. That's where I'm at right now. I'm getting ready to graduate to reels of parts. Um, if you have uh, a reel of 10K resistors costs about $10. It's about 5,000 resistors. It's probably a lifetime supply, but at least they're all mounted on a reel, and the reel is easier to manage, okay? So managing parts is a problem. You go look around on the web. Some people take all the parts off the tape and stuff them into little plastic containers. That works for them. It doesn't work for me. Um, so, but... Everybody struggles with maintaining, managing their sur surface mount parts. Um, just make for sure you have extras because you will lose some. Okay. It's, right. Labels on the bags. Or labels that come. You the the, the parts come with labels. Uh, if it's if it's paper tape stuff, I will frequently turn it over and take a sharpie out and label the back of it because the moment the a uh, piece of tape gets separated from its label, you no longer know what it is. You may be able to somehow get two probe leads on the part to re-identify re it, but usually what I do is I just throw the piece of tape away because I blew it. Okay, so managing surface mount parts is a pain in the tush. Okay, um, DigiKey has these nice paper labels that come with them, but they're huge. Okay, so it's hard to find drawers, and the, you know, that you can fit the labels on. Um, I will usually take, you know, draw my own labels that are smaller if I'm going to put these, these parts in a drawer. I only put my through-hole parts in drawers right now. 
So that's, that's ordering parts. Uh, and after you've ordered your parts, then comes assembly, which will be the next phase of the class. We'll, we'll start assembling some of these boards. Um, and uh, that's, for that class, um, we'll, we'll go over soldering irons and three or four different ways of doing surface mount. Okay? So with that, let's take call this a wrap, and we'll go to Q&A. So turning, pausing for this.